Kalispera, good afternoon. The first problem I have right off the bat with my talk today is there's a clock here. And I am from the island of Icaria, where we have no sense of time. So it, this is going to take about three to four hours. So I'm going to talk about something today that's not as sexy as cancer or some of the other things you've heard of. It's not as sophisticated as genes and DNA. But I'm going to argue is as important and more, even more importantly, it's something we could do something about. I'm talking about healthcare acquired infections, or let's call them hospital infections, infections that happen to patients when they enter a hospital. Many of you in Greece have seen the news headlines in the newspapers about uh, these infections occurring in the Greek hospitals. And I wanted to tell you, what do we mean by these infections, in case you haven't completely grasped it? Um, and I break this down into sort of two general flavors of infection. Um, the first are infections that are associated with devices, things we do to our patients in the hospital. So think about it. We stick tubes in them. We stick tubes in them to help them to give them medication to treat their childhood cancer, tubes to help them pee, tubes to help them breathe. Anytime you stick a tube in somebody, you're breaking nature's most natural barrier, their skin, which allows for a portal of entry of infection. So it's very reasonable the things we do to patients in the hospital can lead to infection. The other general category that's not associated with devices is the things we pass from patient to patient, or from patient to doctor to patient, from doctor to bed to patients. So patient A comes into the hospital with diarrhea, is next to a patient with a respiratory infection, the, the patient transmits the virus for diarrhea to the patient with respiratory infection. Now you have two patients who have two different infections, and this happens all the time. I want to give you some striking numbers. In Greece, 10% of patients hospitalized in, in one of the Greek hospitals get a hospital-acquired infection. 10%, one in 10. That's much more than many other developed countries in Europe and the United States. Secondly, there were 3,000 deaths in Greece last year from hospital-acquired infections. I'm going to say that again, 3,000. So if you open up the newspaper now, you'll read about Ebola virus um, or any other scare like that, Chikoyunga virus, malaria, uh, H1N1 influenza. Right now, there have been no cases of death in Greece from Ebola, but we continue to have cases, patients dying of healthcare-acquired infections. Finally, in this time of financial crisis, as you all know it, because you're living it even more than I do, the cost of these infections, yes, you ready? 1.2 billion euros to the healthcare system in Greece last year. 1.2 billion. To make matters worse, these infections frequently happen um, due to antibiotic-resistant bacteria, bacteria that are difficult to treat with antibiotics. And why is Greece um, at the forefront of that? Again, we have one of the highest rates of antibiotic-resistant bacteria in Europe, and we also use the most antibiotics. So we've created a vicious cycle. Patients get infections, we treat them, they get bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics, and therefore this goes on and on and on and on. Why am I here today, and what is this uh, Clio that, um, initiative that you heard about in the introduction? Um, so I have to take you a little bit back. Uh, Hospital-acquired infections in Greece are my midlife crisis. Um, and what do I mean by that? Um, I grew up in the United States, uh, son of, a Gre of Greek immigrants from Ikaria, and I tell my friends that I'm bipolar. Not mental illness bipolar. Um, but I've always been half Greek, half American. I speak both languages fluently. I change from one language to the other when I read, or write, or speak. And I always have felt this strong tug to, to Greece and my heritage. I have both citizenships, by the way. Um, and I was sitting in my office. I'm a professor of pediatrics and epidemiology at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. About three years ago, I was sitting in my office. And I said, 
what do you want to do? What's next? You've got all these papers. You're successful. What, does this mean anything? And at that time, the Greek, uh, the Greek uh, crisis was really in, uh, in, in its fullest. Um, and I decided that I wanted to do something to help Greece. Me piace to filotimo. This Greek word that actually has, it's a fascinating word. It has no English translation. It's a sense of duty, wanting to do something or assist without the, uh, rea- the, uh, without the guarantee of reward or, or anything like that. Um, I got on a plane, took a three-month leave from um, my job in the United States, and came to Greece and um, sort of assessed this problem of healthcare-acquired infections. And at the end of my three months, um, I... Uh, approached the Stavros Niarchos Foundation with an idea of some work we could do to try to improve the situation, and I was fortunate that they supported the idea and funded it, and out of that was born um, CLIO. CLIO stands for the Center for Collaborative Epidemiology and Outcomes Research. It's a mouthful. It means doing a group of people trying to define and apply the best practices to improve outcomes for our patients. And we're focused specifically right now on um, um, hospital-acquired infections. Um, So let me tell you, some of the challenges, it's been very challenging to work in Greece in this area. Um, We know that most of these infections are preventable. We know that. These are all preventable infections. We know that from experience in other countries. There are countries that talk about getting to zero of these infections. So we're at 10% in Greece, getting to zero. What is the major challenge? The major challenge is not that we don't know what to do. It's getting it done. There's a whole area of science called implementation research. It's taking something we know and putting it into practice. Things as simple as washing our hands, which we can't seem to do very well, and I can't understand why. Um, there's a notropia in Greece around creating systems. We're not used to operationalizing um, and creating systems that lead to better outcomes. We're, we're more um, used to individual efforts. So those were some of the challenges. Plus, I faced the challenge that I was the xeno here, um, which, as you can imagine, can, can be pretty challenging, and I'm sure you've heard from others. Um, we started Clio with five of what I consider my family now, five bright young people, uh, doctors, uh, statisticians, epidemiologists, public health professionals, and we started on this road to implement some of these practices we know work to prevent healthcare-acquired infections. In the, two year, the first two years of working at Pedon, at Children's Hospital in Athens, we reduced bacterial infections, bloodstream infections, the most common nosocomial or hospital-acquired infection, significantly in the highest-risk patients in the pediatric intensive care unit, which there are not many of those successes right now in Greece. We started to document how Uh, practitioners, doctors, nurses, everybody else in the hospital washed their hands. And I was glad to see the the gentleman who spoke uh, about childhood cancer have his alcohol hand gel. I think I need him to give it to the doctors because our hand hygiene compliance is under 20%. Um, And we're working diligently to improve that and have made some improvements. Uh, Finally, I'll um, tell you a little anecdote about how we do some of this work. Um, We work the, in order to prevent surgical site infections, infections that occur after getting an operation, one needs to give antibiotics before the operation. Um, We talked to the surgeons and said, how are you doing this? We're doing it fine. There's nothing going on. And we set upon to get the data. One, one, when you start doing this kind of quality improvement work, you need to get the data. So we actually collected six months of data. We went back to the surgeons, and we showed them the data, and they were using the appropriate antibiotics to prevent these surgical side infections only 40% of the time. So I turned to them and said, so what do you want to do? And here's where that collaborative sense is. This is not me imposing it on you or our group. And they all agreed. They were surprised that that's where they were. So the data is very important. And then um, they wanted to to improve. They wanted to get better. So we set on a six-month project to try to improve the rates. And six months later, their their appropriateness of using these antibiotics to prevent infections uh, was at 80%. 
So anybody who tells me that you can't do this in Greece, we can't do it, then alazume the boris, is wrong. We can do this. Um, um, my vision is really to uh, continue to do this kind of work in Greece and go even beyond infection control work to improve the quality of our care here. And I know I've been told by many people, um, I am really impassioned um, and energized by the work we're doing here. And I see tremendous opportunity for us to keep improving um, uh, our healthcare system for you, for your children, for my children, and for our, our parents. Thank you very much.